Good morning. You're watching Andy's Fishing Wild Cook. This is day two of a trip. We're in a beautiful little little bay. Nice and calm last night. Water's clear. It's 5.30 in the morning and it's beautiful. This is actually a green zone, so I can't actually fish in here. It is really cool exploring new places. I actually went for an explore up in there yesterday. It's actually starting off a little windier than yesterday. It's rare that I have, yeah, two extremely nice days in a row. Actually, I think it's only ever happened once. <laughs> Just had a look at the tides. We've got a little bit of tide run, so I reckon, yeah, big popper. Oh, there's a rock that I want to fish. You need that run for the giant trevally to get into feeding mode. Let's see if I can stretch my arms before breakfast. Now that I've had the electric down for a while, I can tell the current's going that way. So being a bomby, I have to cast on this side of it. Let's go get some. Okay, hey, we're going to use the adrenaline popper. This one got me three big GTs at the reef in the topwater comp. If you haven't seen it, uh, you've probably missed out because that's all finished now. Anyway, first cast for the day. Uh, if you keep an eye out, um, right near where my lure is there, you'll see every now and then the waves breaking on the rock that I'm fishing. So I'm just going to the right of it, which I think is the correct side. But I'll try both sides. And I might be a little too far away still. I've just come to check the sounder out. Have a look at that. I think it might be jigging time. Yeah. Oh, there's some nice fish there. Let's get that out. I'm still going to fish with the popper, but I've just got to see, yeah, see what's going on down there because there is some good fish. I mean, it could even be big fish like GTs and stuff. There we go. First fish of the morning. Feels reasonable-ish. Not fighting a lot. What do we got? God! Definitely bigger ones down there than that. Yeah. Can see those lines still. You are bigger than those lines. Those lines are bigger than you. It's early, people. Let's try a bit of finesse. Literally just moving the rod tip. Like six or eight inches. Yep. Oh, I felt that take. Ah, what have we got? Another one. Oh, I think we might have to move spots. Probably a long finned or honeycomb cod. Hey, off you go, buddy. But that happens. You get a bunch of cod and then you get a nice trout. Ah, bit of a random point here. There could be a bomby left of my lure as well. So, I'll give it a shot. Oh, yep, we've had a looker, had a looker. Oh, he didn't get it. When the stuff you're using isn't working, you use other stuff. Sometimes even predatory fish like Big Trevally, they get a little bit surface shy. And subsurface is what you want. The downside of this is I don't always see the strike and it comes as a real surprise at times. That lure's about a meter underwater. Oh, yep, yep. Oh, I dropped him. Oh, that woke me up. <laughs> oh, and that was on the back edge. That's interesting. Yep, looking fine. No cuts. Yep. Oh, that's a good one. Yep, that is a nice one. Come on up, buddy. Feels troutish, I think. Come on. Yep, it's a coral trout. Woo, nice one. Reckon he's bigger than the one from yesterday. He would go 45, I'm thinking. Oh no, 50. 50 centimetre trout. Beautiful. I've already got one in the esky, so I'm putting this one in my fish keeper back in the ocean. <laughs> I don't mind a little coral trout distraction while I'm trying to get a big GT. These things are, yeah. 
Real pretty. This one's really healthy as well. Look at the colors on him. Woo! I only keep what I'm gonna eat the next day. So, hey, let's let this guy go. Off you go, buddy. There you go. Go on, down you go. <laughs> that way, if I go back to a spot, there's always trout. If you catch everything in a spot and take it home and kill it, you can very quickly deplete spots. Let's see if a change of spot and a morning banana increase my chances of a GT. I haven't had breakfast yet, it's like, I don't know, 10.30, so. Need a bit of banana power. Let's try behind. If I get hooked up there, I'll be in trouble, but give it a shot. Oh, just had a look at Oh, yep, yep, yep. Oh, he hit it. Yep, got him, got him, got him. Oh, I have to drag him out. Oh, skull drag him. <laughs> oh, to drop him. Oh, dropped him. Come on, next one. Oh, I don't think he was hooked properly, that one. It's now very close to the bottom of the tide, so fishing could be a bit slow, but I'm going to stick around until the tide changes because that's when that trevally tend to feed. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Oh, saw him. Three or four. Here we go, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, he got it, got it, yes. Oh, oh right into the rock. Oh, I'm trying to drive the electric at the same time. Oh, he's right on the bottom there. Okay, come on, electric, you need to help me out here. Oh, there's a shark. We got a shark on him. Get him up before the shark gets him. Here we go. Oh, little GT. He's got a little blood coming out of him, but I think he'll be okay. There we go. Little teeny bit of blood, but yeah, you'll survive. Hey, off you go, guy. Watch that shark. See ya. I think we can do better here. Let's try that same spot again. They probably won't be there, but you never know. They're right on that pressure point. Oh, yep, yep, had a looker. Oh, he's still looking, come on, come on. Oh, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> there he is right under it. I just thought I'd change lures, go to a bigger one. And uh, shout out to Brooksy for donating this to the Andes fishing course. Thanks, Brooksy. Most of us YouTubers, like in the fishing space, we actually know each other and we get on quite well. And I'm pretty sure over time, we'll all end up fishing with each other at one point or another. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Come on, come on. Oh, he followed it. Had a couple of swipes at it, but didn't grab it. Yep. Oh, straight away. Little trout. Woo. Didn't take long at all. I just started in a new spot and first drop, Mr. Troutamundo. Hey, off you go, little guy. There you go. Just having a sandwich whilst I'm motored to the next island. I've decided to head back to the mainland. The wind's coming from here. We've got to go that way. And in an hour, these waves are going to be a metre, metre and a the winds come up a bit so I've hidden in this yeah it's fairly clear creek um, as the tide goes out it'll probably get a little bit dirtier but yeah it's really nice at the moment I'm gonna try and catch lunch which is gonna be mangrove jack I'd say on topwater frogs it's the same technique lure that I was using in the filming competition film film a strike on the surface that's to that's the challenge right now I want to film a topwater strike and got to catch my lunch. Got an interesting idea for lunch. It's not something I've ever heard anyone do or seen anyone do. <laughs> I just thought that'd be cool. Anyway, let's get some lunch. We're going to use topwater frogs. The reason for these is they're completely weedless and we can skip them right in there. Now, if you're really observant, you would have noticed something. Write it in the comments. And yeah, I'll let you know if you're right or not. I'm sure a few of you would have picked it up straight away. Some of you wouldn't even notice. <laughs> but yeah, something fun. Oh. Oh, that 
Ja, ik wil maar. Got me in. Oh, oh well, can see the lure in the snag, but yeah, fish is gone. There it is, just wrapped around. There we go. Oh, big mangrove jack. Oh. Oh, big mangrove jack, cartwheeled over the branch. Oh, that is a big one. That is a good fish. I reckon we've got lunch. Come here, fish. Oh, he jumped out. <laughs> Crazy. There we go, we got him. Have a look where the hook is. It's actually under his chin. So he grabbed the plastic on top and the, the hook was underneath and went through his through his skin there. But yeah, that is a beautiful mangrove jack. Look at that. I'll get a measurement on him and we'll um yeah, we'll eat that guy. Ooh, it's so good. <laughs> it's close to 40 if not more. Let's have a look. Yep, 42 centimeters. Beautiful fish, very dark fish. You can see the sand out behind me. It's, um, yeah, we probably could, well, well, well I think we're gonna get stuck in here, but I just wanted to get a, a better picture of this mangrove jack with the sun. Get the hat off. <laughs> there we go, beautiful. <laughs> Come on, put your fins up. No, he doesn't want to put his fins up. Stunning fish. Yeah, this one's quite dark, sometimes there. Much redder and much lighter. Check out his fangs. Beautiful big eye for hunting. Yeah, just all bronzes and reds and browns. So here's a rod I'm using. It's an Atomic Arrows Barra, six foot, medium heavy, and 12 to 25 pound line. I've got I think I've got 25 pound line on that and little 3000 uh, Savage Gear. There you go. I've got a new reel. But yeah, if you're looking for a rod that um, has good performance but isn't going to break the bank, the Atomic Arrows range is, yeah, really quite good. Yep. Oh, I missed him. Oh, missed him. Oh, didn't think he was going for that. He was too far out. Now that we've caught our food, I'm going to put on a Atomic Soft Pop. It's a like a soft, soft popper, yeah. When a fish grabs this, because it's got the two hooks on it, it's, um, yeah, definitely going to get stuck. Now we've got some rocks here, and we've got some rocks here, and that's why I'm using this lure now, because the soft plastics, they're good for skipping into cover, whereas these, with the double trebles, they'll get caught every time. Got him. Oh, another mangrove jack. That was cool. Right where I expected him. Oh, not a bad fish. Oh, and look at that. First car, well, first bunch of casts, but first take. And he's hooked twice. Look at that. <laughs> Upside down, Miss Jane. There we go. Beautiful little fish. He's got a weird coloration going on. Hey, oh. got a red tummy on him. Hey, off you go, little buddy. Oh, didn't want to wait, but that worked like clockwork. We'll try again for another one. Hopefully, I got the strike on the zoom camera there. It's really hard to get that footage um, when the boat's just moving around all the time. So, yeah, fingers crossed, I got it. 
boy, is it getting shallow here? Oh, I don't want to get stuck here. Big stingray just there, big cowtail ray. But this is, yeah, probably less than a foot deep here. That's, yeah, sandbar. Once we get over here, we've got a couple more to get around. Ooh, just scrape through. Yep, just scrape through. Woohoo, cool. Let's see how close we can get to this stingray. This is a leopard ray. You can tell by the pattern on him. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Oh, got him. Oh, I don't know what that is. It launched. Oh, it dropped it. It launched itself out of the water. Oh. Oh, yeah, I don't have no idea what that was. All the hooks are still there. Got a face scale. Almost looked like a bass. Oh, got him. Oh, what was that? I don't know what that was. Because that soft pop is a very light lure, I'm using a seven foot um, atomic arrows rod. This has got a, a, a lot more leverage and it's a little softer. So yeah, little, I think, yeah, Shimano, Di no, Daiwa 4000, 5000, there you go. Oh, oh, got me in, got me in, got me in. Getting out, getting out. Oh, and I think that other fish that came out like charged, that ate the, um, the popper first up, that was a mangrove jack too, because he looked exactly the same as that fish, but yeah. That one that ate the popper was much, much bigger. Another nice mangrove jack. He would go right on legal, I would say. Hey, okay. off you go, buddy. See ya. Yep, there he goes. Woohoo! Oh. Got him. I was just looking away. Oh, another mangrove jack. Oh, there's a whole school of them. Look at that. There's like 12 fish. Oh, I think one of them stole the plastic. He did too. <laughs> oh. There he is. He's still eating it. He's being, oh, there's a couple of big ones in there. He's still, he's still, <laughs> that's incredible. There, he's just let it go. And he's eating it again. That is Oh, that is incredible. There it is on the surface and a big jack's looking at it. I don't think he'll eat it now. I've got this guy. There's the plastic. <laughs> I don't know how many big fish were right here. That's, oh, there's nothing there. It's shallow. One twig sticking out. That's bizarre. Hey. He's going to jump off, I guarantee it. Hey, beautiful fish. Cool. <laughs> Off you go, buddy. There you go. Let's get that plastic. Oh, that was so cool watching that. He was just chomp, 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 chomp. And everyone was like trying to grab it off him. Got it. There we go. Look at that. I can use that again. But yeah, this is the snag. There was at least half a dozen fish. Some of them were, you know, good 45s. Maybe bigger. That's incredible. There's a nice spot for a late lunch, early dinner. Crystal clear water, beautiful white sand. We got some little, I think they're plovers. Plovers are actually only this big. The, the big birds you see, everyone calls them golden plovers. Uh, they're actually lap wings. So yeah, just another cool little fact. I'm gonna show you what we're cooking. Let's see if you can guess what I'm making before I finish making it. Gonna get about a quarter of an onion, very, Quite a small onion, and I want to dice that real fine. It's almost six in the afternoon, and the sun is still really bright. Got about half an hour of full sun left. This is very simple, but probably not the easiest thing to guess. Then I'm going to separate one egg. Thank you to my chickens for providing the egg. Put that in there. <laughs> now you aren't going to get too many more clues. This is some capers. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. A couple more. 
There we go, about 14 capers. Once again, give them a real good mince up with the knife. Capers go really well with fish. It's almost a paste there. Season with salt and pepper. This has got both. Nice liberal seasoning. Ooh, yeah, lots of flavor. Have we had some guesses yet? Because we're up to the fish now. So really, I could do a bunch of different things with this. We're not cooking it. So this year's been very hectic for me. I sold a, a house, I bought a new boat, bought a new car, did that filming competition. And I'm really hoping that uh, next year, I um, do the second the intermediate uh, fishing course. I've been meaning to, to say thank you to a bunch of people who've joined up for the basic fishing course. I'll put some names over here. Um, so far, it's all been positive feedback, so that's great. And that encourages me to do the intermediate course soon. Take out the pin bones. They're right on the lateral line where that, that little, bit of, little bit of blood there, that's where the pin bones are and feed the fishes. There we are, beautiful glistening white fish meat. And you guessed it, we're gonna dice and slice, or slice and dice. Sun's about to go down, have a look. All right, that'll do. She's all minced up. Try and show you the consistency. It's actually all sticking together. <laughs> um, let's see. There's, there it is. Really finely chopped or minced. And you guessed it. Right in our bowl with everything else. Now have a think about it. What do all these ingredients equal if they're all mixed together? It's fish tartare. There's only one thing that I wish I had brought. I had my hand on it actually. It was either a lime or a lemon. That would just make this just spectacular. But I think it's still gonna be amazing. I can smell, yeah, definitely the onion I can smell. Can't really smell the fish or the egg yolk there. They don't have a lot of smell. <sighs> yeah, a vague, yeah, a little, little, little caper smell in there. Yeah, the color on that is actually pretty nice. That egg yolk made it that color. Now I've spared no expense. We're gonna have some Shapes, <laughs> barbecue flavor. That should be enough, about half a packet. Actually, before we put it on the shapes, let's try some of this. There's a nice little helping. Mmm, nothing is overpowering there. You can actually still taste the fish. I'm gonna put a bit more salt and pepper in there. I could have definitely put more capers in, and I kind of wish I had either lemon or lime. But the thing with lemon or lime is, actually there's a bit of, salt on those. Um, you put lemon and lime in there, it'll cure the fish so it won't be tartare. Okay, let's try that again. Mmm. That extra salt and pepper. Mm, I can taste the caper a little bit now. Onion, definitely not overpowering. Still a bit of fish flavor. Mmm. This is actually really nice. I'll be doing this again. All right, let's have it on my, on my cracker, on my shape. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good. Sun's about to go down. Let me put you over here. I can enjoy the sunset together. Have some fish. Or yeah, how many of you wish it was taste vision? <laughs> mm. I reckon I'll work on this. This tastes really good, but I reckon I can perfect it. Mm. Yeah, definitely. This has potential. Fish tartare? Yeah, definitely potential. In the comments, write down what you think I could add and we'll work on it together. Well, I think you missed the sun going down. The camera just overheated. That's the third camera today that overheated. It's, um, it is quite warm here. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. If you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out.